I'm wondering how we can differentiate when we're genuinely confused and just really holding on to a fear. I know confusion is probably just another fear. Yep. But, um, for instance, I want to walk as closely as possible um, towards... I, I want to work towards a one-on-one one -on -one relationship with God. I'd like to give up everything, all the material stuff and, and just basically take that path. Yep. Um, but I'm concerned about the security of my children, who are grown up really now. Yep. But they just might need financial support from me. Yep. So how do we know whether we're just confused about what is the right thing to do or whether we're just really frightened? Well, I think your statement is good that confusion is always a sign that there's a fear associated. Does that make sense? Because when we have no fear, we know almost automatically what is the right thing to do. You know, there's, there's a very direct course of action when there's no fear. Confusion is fed by fear. Confusion and doubt... Uh, indications of fear still existing that cause us to not see the complete picture. In the case you, you, you mentioned, the case of looking after children, particularly when children are grown up, uh, I had to go through a lot of emotions with my two boys where I had to give up this idea that I was responsible for their life. And uh, like Tristan now is 28, Caleb's 26, and I when they were 18, 19, I was still in this mode of thinking that somehow I was going to have to provide for them what they needed in their life. And then, and then after a while I realised that I had a fear and it was a, it based around some feelings of guilt that I had to work way, my way through. So I worked my way through some guilt. Then I realised I had a fear of what might happen to myself if nobody came to my support. And once I worked through that, I realised that I didn't need any personal support from anybody ever and, and that I'd be fine. And once I worked through a couple of other emotions similar to that, I started realising that I did not have to support both of my sons ever again. I could give them a gift if I wanted to, but I did not ever have to support them. Now, both Tristan and Caleb initially felt a fair bit of resistance to that. <laughs> Right, naturally, because they were getting things before then. You know, like I'd bought them cars and I'd bought them and I'd paid for their house and I'd done a number of things for them. And now they weren't getting those things from me and they had to contemplate their own fear of creating those things for themselves. So, so now they had to work out what they treasured. They had to work out what, you know, they had to start working out whether they were capable in their life of creating those particular things. And what they did within, in a very short period of time for, for, for probably Caleb and for a bit longer time for Tristan, um, was they eventually worked through the issue and decided that they could control their entire life by themselves. They didn't need me or anyone else at all. And that freed them completely like from a lot of fear-based actions. So what I found I was doing was I was helping them stay in a place where they didn't have the confidence in God or themselves to create their own life. And I was actually assisting them to do it. And, and then I realised in that process that my assistance of them doing it was based on my fears about God not supporting my life. And I had to work my way through that. And once I worked my way through that, I now felt completely open to the guys looking after their own lives. So much so that uh, when I first met Mary, one of Mary's primary um, uh, condemnations of me, I suppose I'd call it, was that I wasn't connected enough to my family. And I'm saying, but I am connected to my family. I love my boys, you know, we get along together great, we have great time together. Uh, we don't, but Mary's family would ring her two, three times a, day, a week, many times, and, and expect her to live with them and all sorts of things. And she's above 30 at that point in time. And I'm going, no, that's not the kind of relationship I have with my boys anymore. We have a grown up relationship, you know, where the boys, well, I call them my boys, but the, the boys are completely self sufficient in their life. They do not need me at all. Oh, isn't that wonderful for them that they do not need me at all but it's also wonderful for me because it allows me freedom to also do the things that I want to do and it's not like I'm going to not spend time with them because I do but 
but we have now complete autonomy. So it's only a fear, again, that cause, would cause the confusion. Now, like yourself, I was confused back then about that decision. Like, at the time I made that decision, I felt like, ah, oh, you know, but I'd like to do this for my boys. One of the reasons why I was developing some uh, property was I wanted to be able to give the boys a house each and give the boys a car each, and that you know, was one of the one of the motivations. Not not a not one of many motivations, but one of them. And after a while, I realised I had to give all of that up because I was actually teaching my own sons that they were not capable of looking after themselves. And what a terrible thing to teach a person. Like, there are many of us who are 50 or 60 or 70 who still feel totally incapable of looking after ourselves, still wanting a backup, a backup plan. You know why most people in, the, in, in Eastern countries and in third world countries have families? Not because they love their children. For many of them, it's because it's the source of their welfare in their old age. It's their backup plan. You know why they have boys? Because boys have a higher ability to have a higher earning and income and other, and other things in those locations more than girls. So they don't want girls because that doesn't help their backup plan. It's sad, but true. So I sort of feel like most of the questions we can ask, particularly when we have confusion, my assumption whenever I have confusion is I've got some fear that I'm not seeing. It's just a general assumption I make every single time. I'm afraid of something. Yeah. 